whenever you get a Hemi Ram and a Cummins Ram together where they have the same trim level, you got to do a comparison test. Why not? Red, white, and blue. Oh, by the way, I did a video on that truck I just sold not long ago. But yeah, look at these configurations. Like, Night Edition looks so good on white, red, and blue. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Let's give a special shout out to Larry H. Miller. They have both of these trucks here. Perfect time to come test drive and buy a truck right now because they have a great selection right now. Inventory just starting to get better. And yeah, Larry H. Miller here, Chrysler Dodge Street Ram in Sandy, Utah. Be sure to give them a look up. Now let's start with the least favorite setup, which is my favorite setup next to that Cummins over there. Why would you buy this truck? Well, let's take a look at the window sticker so we have a better understanding of what this truck has. So if you are looking at a Ram 2500, the base price is always gonna be the same whether you get a Hemi or a gas, so just keep that in mind. And this one basically does not have an extra ad for the paint. So starting down, actually it's gonna be at the top here. It's not a lot of options on this truck per se, but starting it off is the uh, leather trim bucket seats that comes standard with the bench. And some of the notable features on here, obviously, is the Night Edition, and here's everything that's going to come in there. But that Laramie Level A is actually a pretty good deal. There is another package that you can get that is a little bit more expensive. And this one does have the sunroof. This has the 8.4 touchscreen as opposed to the 12-inch display. And then this one does have dual alternators, which you don't normally see on the gas trucks. But here's the total price for this truck, including destination at 73,180. So this truck does have a good amount of options on it. The only option it doesn't have that I probably would recommend on any Hemi setup is the 410. Now this has a 373, so it's geared pretty well for towing. And the 410 is just gonna give you better performance if you do live like in areas that have like a lot of grades. Like, so if you live like in mountainous areas, even if you don't need the towing capacity, it's just good to have the 410. All right, let's take a look under the hood. So as you saw on the window sticker, this truck did have dual alternators. So one's right there. And one is right, right below, right there. So the 6.4 liter Hemi is gonna have 410 horsepower, 429 foot pounds feet of torque. But here's where this configuration is great. Behind this engine is a eight speed transmission. It's a ZF transmission reliable has deep gears and very smooth the cummins equipped truck has a six-speed transmission it's the 68 rv and it's been around for a while and i find it to be reliable too based off of what people have told me about that transmission but one thing i like about the hemi is this setup is great for cost and let's talk about the cummins since we're talking about cost this ram is probably the most sought after setup of all time because most people want to have a diesel option now let's take a look at the window sticker for this truck so you guys get an idea of some of the features on this one and let's go through some of the towing numbers now as i mentioned when i showed you the window sticker for the hemi the base price for this truck is a little bit less than the hemi so i'm assuming they must have raised prices at some point between the build date so when we get to the numbers on the door be sure to look at the build dates because I'm not going to mention it in the video because I just noticed this. But let's go ahead and get through this really quickly. So as you see here, this truck has a 61.2 base price. Um, if it was the same price, this number would be over $80,000. So just keep that in mind. But pretty much the same options, Night Edition and Larry Level A. But the Cummins is basically $9,600 there. And this one just has the auxiliary switches, clearance lights, red lighting. And then this does have the 8.4 inch display too. Destination comes in at $17.95 with a total price of $79.2. So if you want this Cummins option right there, you're going to have to pay $9,600. Now, obviously, a diesel option is great, especially if you plan on keeping the truck a long time. Even if you don't plan on keeping it a long time, a diesel is going to hold its value. So that $9,600 comes in handy when it comes time to trade this truck in on something else. Add to that... This Cummins option has 370 horsepower, although it's a little bit lower than the Hemi, 
it has 850 pound feet of torque. That's almost double. So when it comes down to climbing grades, you will have no problem with this engine setup. Like I can almost guarantee you that you're not gonna have problems with this when it comes down to towing. So what is the towing capacity for the Cummins? Well, on this one is a little bit over 16,500 pounds. On the Hemi is 14,500 pounds basically. So basically you have 2000 pounds more of towing capacity. But here's my biggest issue with buying a diesel engine. Diesel option trucks have more maintenance and they have more emission control components on them, which makes them a little bit harder to live with. So if you do plan on buying this truck, know that you have to change your fuel filters. Now, one of the fuel filters out back is just below or on the side of the axle. Let's see if we can find it together. Let's see. It is right there, actually. You can see it right there. The other one is right below there. And on top of that, the Cummins takes a lot more engine oil versus the Hemi. Add to that the cost of diesel. And this option does become a little bit more complex in today's standards. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention too. You see that big old glob of metal one, two, three and i didn't even show you the egr in the engine but there's so much more things to go wrong with this truck in comparison so if you don't drive a diesel enough you could potentially have problems so getting on the highway towing often is definitely something i would recommend if you want to buy this truck however there is a lot of good news for the hemi if you want a Hemi truck, you don't have fuel filters that you have to change. On top of that, it takes less oil. Now, granted, I will say the diesel goes 15,000 miles on the oil changes. Most people aren't going to probably do that because it's probably mostly just towing and mostly just like highway mileage. But on the Hemi, it doesn't take as much oil in comparison with the Cummins. So you're going to have a little bit cheaper oil change. And it might be even a little bit easier to change the oil in this truck, too. So if you don't plan to tow as often, maybe you plan on only towing maybe a couple hundred miles a year or maybe a couple thousand, and you do drive a lot in the city, this is a better option in my opinion. Now, obviously, if you don't drive a lot on the highway, you can always you know, schedule out long trips, 45 minutes or so in the Cummins equipped truck to get that DPF filter like cleaned out. You wanna just keep that thing low. It does have something on the dash. You basically can um, monitor and what it'll do is it'll show you how full your DPF is. And yeah, it's something that you have to just take note of if you plan on buying a diesel. You could always delete, but that's illegal, unfortunately. <laughs> Keep in mind, diesels have preheat too that you have to deal with. So if you live in really cold climates and you don't park your truck in a garage, you would have to plug this in in order for this truck to have a quick start. Um, I don't care which truck you buy, obviously, like whatever truck you feel comfortable with, you should definitely choose. The diesel is a hard one to beat because the power you get, the exhaust brake, uh, the downshifts that you get compared to the Hemi and the ZF is so much better. So this is a better truck for towing. So if you do tow a lot, and I would figure maybe a lot in grades, this is probably the only option I would choose personally. But for some of us, or I should say most of us, we don't always plan to be hooked up to a trailer as often. So the Hemi is a better option for most of us. And if you would like to tow a fifth wheel with a three quarter ton truck, especially for Ram, I'm talking specifically for them, you would have to consider a Hemi because these don't have enough payload only because Ram will not raise this number. I am 100% on board with them doing this. Ford is doing this, GM is doing this. They're putting scales in their trucks next year. And what that means is if you start overloading these trucks and going over the GVWR and the payload, they're gonna be able to monitor that and they could void your warranty. So just keep that in mind. So with Ram, all they would have to do is just raise this by maybe five to 800 pounds. I would say 800. That way you would have just about 3,000 pounds 
of payload capacity for this truck. So let's take a look at the numbers. So this truck has a payload of 2,175 pounds. I also want you to note this. They lower the rear gross axle weight rating to 6,040. Let me show you what it is on the Hemi. On the Hemi, is 6,390 pounds. Now, obviously the gross axle on the front's higher because the Cummins weighs more, but look at your payload capacity on this truck. 2,943 pounds. This truck has a sunroof, dual alternators, and a few more options that this Cummins equipped truck did not have. So you could even have a slightly higher payload without those options. So if you're in the market, do some research, do some more like digging to see which truck works best for you. If you change this scenario to a one ton truck, I would venture to say that the Cummins becomes a little bit more of a better option. I don't mind one ton Hemi trucks like this one right here. This is a mega cab. I did a video on this one and I'll put it at the end of this one for you. This truck has like over, I think it has over 4,000 pounds of payload. So right out of the gate, you're pretty much able to tow a 40 foot fifth wheel with a GVWR below 14,500 pounds easily. But on that note, I hope this video was helpful. Special shout out to Larry H. Miller here and Sandy. They have Chrysler, Dodge, Seat, Ram, and they did allow me to do this video. So be sure to check them out if you are in the market. See you guys in the next video.